Good evening. Thank you all uh, so much for coming tonight. Uh, this is our our second date night. Um, I, I see some very familiar faces that were here last time. Uh, we might have a few new faces, but um, tonight is a second night of uh, a continuation of last date night. So um, I, I don't definitely don't want to steal the thunder from um, doctors Andy and Kristen from their presentation, but just thank you so much for, for coming back. Uh, maybe you might have shared this with some friends. Definitely, uh, I know there are several people who wanted to be here tonight but couldn't. Just a reminder, we will have this recorded, um, both audio and video. So um, just be thinking about that, uh, who might be um, good to share this content with. So just again, um, we have uh, some adult beverages here, restrooms outside. I don't want to take up your time, but... Um, Doctors Andy and Kristen Ploche. And they reminded me, let's pray. Andy, would you like to lead us in prayer? In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. Loving God, I ask your blessing upon our night, just upon our, our marriages, upon our family, upon our parish family, upon all those who uh, are discerning marriage, who are in marriage, especially those who maybe are struggling, um, who are maybe going. Um, whose spouses are just going in opposite directions, who are struggling to communicate, struggling to, to just be present to each other. We pray that our conversation tonight may, may heal us, may feed us, may strengthen us, so that we may be instruments um, to others who might need um, a word that we hear tonight, that might need us to be a witness to them um, as a missionary disciple. Bless our night tonight. Bless our time. Protect us. Bless uh, Dr. Andy and Dr. Kristen. Give them the words to say that would feed and strengthen us. We ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, brother. You want to talk first, huh? All right. Welcome, everybody. I'm so glad y'all showed up. I was a little nervous when uh, I was talking to Kristen today, and I'm like, if, if just two people show up, it's a win. So thank you all for, for showing up tonight. Um, second day night, we're not going to talk very long because we need to get you guys out of here and working on your, on your stuff. So 22 minutes and 38 seconds is how long we think this is going to take. So don't time me, but here we go. So I'm going to turn it over to Kristen for tell well, us who we are. Hello, everybody. Like you said, I'm Kristen. Um, just to give you a little background information about us and how we ended up here tonight. Um, we are veterinarians by trade. Um, we owned a couple of practices, one in Lafayette, one in New Iberia, that we sold about four years ago, I guess, and uh, tried to retire and decided we weren't quite ready for that yet. So we ended up starting a little company called Smartfish. And what we do with that company um, is we coach other businesses on how to be what they really want to be and how to be their best business. Um, so we um, lived in Broussard for about 33 years, uh, parishioners of Sacred Heart. We have two kids that are grown and gone, but they came through St. Cecilia, um, made their sacraments here, and we've enjoyed being a part of this parish for quite a while now. Um, we're happy to be here with you tonight, and I think we're going to give you something that you'll be able to take home and, and make a difference in your marriage, hopefully. All right. You, you have the remote, right? I'm going to give it back to you. So um, we, we've had businesses and we, we had uh, a lot of growth in the business and as it was it was growing um, we realized that we were kind of losing control of our family not our family but also our family but also of the business and we were looking for a way to help get the business under control uh, instead of it controlling us so we ran across a system that actually helped a lot and and took a a lot of the pressure off and really gave us a way to, to um, have more fun in our life. And as we were going through that, we realized that, man, if we could just do this for a family, um, it would be so awesome because this would work for a family. But it was so complex in a business. I mean, think about it. A family doesn't have the energy. They don't have the time, the resources that it would take, that a business would be able to devote to making this happen. So not smart enough, me, to be able to make this work in a family. So we just never did, but it's always been on our mind. 
But there's a guy, Patrick Lencioni, uh, who's, a, who's a business guru, and I've followed him my whole career. He was able to tweak this system and actually make it simple enough and easy enough for a family to be able to do. And um, so when we found that, of course, talking to Father Michael, I'm like, and he's like, yeah, that sounds great, do it. So here we are. Uh, we are not therapists, we're not counselors, we're, not, we're just veterinarians that um, enjoy doing this, this kind of stuff. So um, running your family like a business, kind of a question mark. I really, that sounds a little bit generic, maybe not something that we would want to do. Um, but you have to agree that your family is an organization. And not only is it an organization, it's probably the most important organization to you that you'll ever be a part of your entire life. So the problem is that we tend to wing it a lot in our family. We make decisions just based on Mm, this kind of feels like the right thing to do right now. Never really having an intention of where we want to be or what we want our family to look like. So we, we, we make decisions just kind of off the cuff. So instead of having a family plan, very few families figure out who they want to be, where they want to go, and how they want to get there. Right? So we just never put enough effort in, into that. So this guy, Patrick, I really admire him because it really takes genius. It takes true genius to take something complicated like running a business or running a family and to make it simple. So I admire that. And, and the thing is that, you know, when we graduated college or you graduate veterinary school, in that diploma, there's nothing in there that is gonna give you the wisdom and the ability to run a business. And when you get married, there's nothing in your marriage vows that's gonna tell you this is how you need to run your family, right? So how, how do we not wing it? How do we prevent from, from being chaotic and confusion and having a lot of ambiguity in our, in our family? So there's three questions I'm going to talk about it being simple. There's three questions that Patrick's going to get you to answer. The first one is, who are you as a family? Um, and that is your core values. Um, your core values help determine what decision you're going to make at the right time, what choices are you going to make, and hopefully if you're doing that, your kids are watching you, your grandkids are watching you, your neighbors may be watching you. And if you are living your core values consistently every day, day in and day out, you begin to affect your kids, your grandkids, the people that you hang around with. So typically, and we did this last week, uh, last month, so I'm not gonna go into it a lot, but it's three to five values. Um, if you went through your list, did, did everybody get a chance that was here last month or listened to it? live. Did y'all do your core values? Did you end up with a bunch at first and be like, wow, yeah? So it's kind of hard to narrow them down, but if you can narrow them down, um, get to three to five values that truly identify who you are as a family, what do you stand for, what makes you unique, and separates you from, from everybody else, doesn't make you better. It's not making you better. It just defines who you are. So you have, you're grounded, and you know what you stand for. So there's a couple of traps. Um, if you haven't done your core values yet, or your family values, one is the first trap is called aspirational values. And these are the values that you desire to have, but they not necessarily, they're not necessarily your core values. Um, so you'll hear things like a value of gratitude or passion or humor. And it's like, I'm grateful, you know? I'm kind of funny, I'm really not. But, but if you want that, but it's not your core value, then 
it's an aspirational value, and it's, you got to eliminate that. It's not, it's not who you are. The second one is permission to play. This is a trap where you'll hear a lot of corporations, and they'll use words like um, honesty, integrity, um, hard work, ethics, but they, to, so in a, in a family, a core value that might be a permission to play would be fidelity, loyalty. Those are just absolutely necessary to have if you're going to be in a relationship, in a marriage, a successful relationship. So those are not your core values. They're just, you have to have those, right? So when you're creating your core values, I know you've done them, and, and if you have, great. But recognize that it's a work in progress. Um, they're not gonna, there's not going to be a test at the end of this thing, but look at your core values um, frequently enough and test them and make sure that they are true. You went through the work, and you've probably can't come really close to them, but if you evaluate them honestly um, on a consistent basis, you're going to tweak them, and that's expected and probably recommended. So um, some samples of some core values, and I'm just going to take a minute to do this, but um, just to kind of, and we're going to give you all a, a list of a bunch of words, because sometimes you, you're trying to think, it's like, what, what is that word I'm looking for? So these are just some that y'all wrote. Um, tolerance, acceptance, work-life balance, resilience with adversity, play your own game, live mindfully, transparency, stability, faithful, guidance, consistency, family-centered, hardworking, honest, Respectful to all. Faith. Willingness to help. Material things are not important. Positive reinforcement. Not always having to be the best. So, amazing core values. And recognize that you're going to hear some words when we follow up with this tonight that are going to resonate with you and you'll be like, yeah. That's who I want to be, but just make sure it's who you are, not who you want to be. So that's just a kind of a review of the, um, of the core values. Uh, ours are just faith-centered relationships, right thing for the right reason, continuous self-improvement, and make a difference. And it helps to kind of put this into sort of a little paragraph, and trust me, it doesn't have to be a Nobel Peace Prize liturgy, liturgy type paragraph. Grammar doesn't matter. Sorry, Aaron. But, and Katie. Um, but you should write it because it, it creates a story. And if you can put it into a, a meaningful uh, story that you can relate to when you read it, because we're going to ask you to make this public in, in your house in some way, some fashion, um, that you see it every day. We keep ours, it's kind of in our, in our kitchen. If we know somebody's coming over, we kind of put it away a little bit, but sometimes we don't, and we're okay with that. So you saw this last time, so I'm not going to go over it, but um, we're a faith-centered family that strives to put God first in our thoughts and actions. We value relationships with family, friends, and colleagues, and enjoy hosting and attending social events. We do the right thing for the right reason, even when it's not easy. We believe in continual self-improvement. We can always be and do better, and we want to make a difference in our family, our church, our community, and our profession. So the objectives tonight is to have fun. Um, we're going to keep it as simple as we can. For sure, there's natural complicators in this world. Um, so we're gonna try not to do that. We're gonna give you context and color on the second question that we're gonna ask you when you go on your date night tonight to spend some time on. 15 minutes, maybe 30 tops, but it's great fodder for, for conversation and, and discussion to figure out. And um, so you'll have the date night to, to answer this, this next question. You're gonna hear some 
some funny terms, some goofy terms. Um, you're going to hear things that you can either use or you can make up um, yourself, all right? And then what I want you to understand is that answering this question is the quickest way to rally your family and create unity and create clarity. Whether you have kids or not, um, if they're going out of the house, we still have to answer this question to know where we're going and then how we're going to get there. So there's two rules. The second question is, what is your top priority, of course? But the two rules to that is you can only have one priority. When you, and this is going to make sense when you start talking about it, because when you start analyzing what's important and what you need to work on, you're going to have five or six things, maybe 12, that are all going to be important. The challenge is to narrow it down to the most important one, all right? Narrow it down to the, the most important one. And then the time frame is important. Your top priority needs to take between two and six months to complete. If it's something that's going to take longer than six months to do, that time frame is, is so long that you're going to it just leads to procrastination, and you tend to just put stuff off. It's just too far out there. Heck, I might even be in a different job in six months, or you know, my kid, this problem I'm dealing with right now with my child, they're probably going to grow out of it by six months, right? So that's the kind of thing I want you to understand with that. Two months, though, um, tends to be too short to do something really substantive. It's, um, you can do a lot of a lot of things in two months that are probably not the top priority for you at this time. So the, the appropriate time frame seems to be about two to six months to answer this, this question. So just things to think about, like by Christmas. If we do this, our family will be, right? Or by the first of the year, we will be. So those are kind of the things that you want to think about when you're trying to answer the top priority. So realistic time frames are important. Um, if you want to get your finances in order so you can get the kids to college, get them in a private school or, or retire, that might be a little bit too hard to do in two to six months, unless you've been working on it already. But you can break that down now into a manageable priority that you need to work on, if that's something that you want to work towards, you need to start working on it. So decide what part of that is important that we can work on in the next two to six months. If we want to rekindle our marriage, been working on that for 33 years, but if there's something that we need to do in the next two to six months, let's put it in there. If that's the top priority for you right now, let's make it happen. Um, if, you know, our daughter is struggling with something, school or being bullied, whatever. Is that a priority that we need to focus on? So there's different things throughout your life in different stages of your life that you'll need to focus on. Recognize that and let's get an action plan to make that thing get better, all right? Uh, cutting the grass, um, probably not a two-month priority. Just put that up there just to give you an idea. Of. So personal example, we have a three-month um, goal or a three-month uh, top priority or a three-month rallying cry, and we have a son getting married, thank you, Lord, in April. Um, the wedding reception is gonna be at our home so we need to do the stuff that to get our house ready for a wedding reception. Um, so this is all I need to say about, because I'm going to turn it over to Kristen. So I, I'm, the, I'm the guy in the house that kind of dreams up a lot of stuff, and then she makes it happen. So this is where she takes over.
I'm the detail person. Um, so Andy talked a lot about the rallying cry, which is your one big priority that you want to work on for the next two to six months. So what I want to give you is some ways to ensure that that's going to happen and that you're going to be successful in achieving that priority once you set it. So the first thing I want to introduce you to is called a defining objective. So if you have this beautiful statement of what you want to accomplish, but you don't give it context or make a plan on how it's going to happen and how that looks, it's likely not going to happen and you won't succeed. So a defining objective is an action step that's specific, it's trackable or measurable, and it's something that you know if you set five um, defining objectives for whatever your rallying cry is, if you do all five of those things, you're going to reach your goal. So it brings it down to a level where you can track your progress, keep, keep yourself online to achieving what you really want to have happen. <clears throat> Beyond that, we need to talk about something called a standard objective. And what this means is that when you do pick that one thing and you set your um, action plan on how that's going to happen, you jump in with both feet, you're excited about it, you're going to put all your efforts and energy into making that happen, but what you don't want to do is forget about all the other things that are very important, still going to need to be done every day, that fall into the background. So to prevent that, we're going to try to have you list out around eight, some people do fewer, some people do more, um, but they're called standard objectives. And these are just your day-to-day -day responsibilities that have to happen. And if you neglect these, your family's gonna fall apart, okay? Examples would include your finances, um, your spiritual health, marriage, education, if you have children, that's a priority. If you stop doing homework with them and they start not turning things in, that's gonna be a problem. If you don't pay your light bill, that's going to be a problem. So keeping yourself online with your day-to-day -day responsibilities is critical. An example that I was using is uh, Andy talked about rekindling your marriage as a, a rallying cry. Even though you're working actively on that, you still have to attend to all the other needs that happen and need, need to be ha handled on a daily basis. Okay? So this is going to be your homework for tonight. We have some handouts we're going to give you. But basically, we're going to have you answer that question by creating a rallying cry, which is your big important thing that you want to have happen for the next two to six months. And then below that, we're going to have you list five defining objectives that are the action steps that you're going to track and measure to make sure you're on track to hitting your goal. And then below that, we're going to have you identify your standard objectives. And these are just the other most important things that have to occur and be tended to on a daily to weekly basis, okay? We're going to have a little worksheet at the back of your um, paperwork that is a blank family plan. And once you finish the exercise, you'll be able to complete that. And then we'd like you to post it. Like Andy said, uh, the kitchen seems to be the best place because everybody goes in there at least a few times a day. You see it, you think about it, and even if it's subconscious, seeing that every day is going to keep it front and center so you don't forget about the priorities. Okay? This is an example um, using the... What Andy was sharing with you was just our rallying cry. It's a three-month plan for us, and again, it's to prepare for our house for a wedding reception. So our defining objectives are hiring a landscaper, drawing out a site plan, designing flower beds, having our house washed, and having our house painted. All things that need to be done, but now they're a priority because we got a lot of people coming to see all this stuff. The defining objectives that we don't want to neglect are our family time, our faith, home maintenance, um, we like to do outdoor things like fishing and camping, uh, staying in our budget, maintaining a calendar because we do still work and travel a lot, uh, and then just staying healthy so we can enjoy all these things. So that's just an example um, of what ours looks like. I'm going to turn it back over to Andy. He's going to tell you a little preview about question number three. How are we doing on time? All right, so question number three comes up next month. So the first question is, who are you as a family? What are your core values? Second question is, what is your top priority? What's your rallying cry for the next two to six months? And then if we do that, if we create our core values, write them down like we're supposed to, we spend some time and identify what is truly important in our family for the next two to six months that we would move the needle in a very positive direction if we made that rally and cry happen, right? So we'll do that, and then we'll write it all down, and then we'll put it in a beautiful little folder, maybe do a three-hole punch, and draw it nice and neat, 
And then you take this thing and you put it in your wherever, cabinet, never to be seen again. That's what happens to most of the things that we do is out of sight, out of mind. So if we don't make this very visible in our daily lives, we're going to lose track of it. Best intentions, you're still going to get derailed. And it's very um, disappointing to go through all of this to, and then forget about it. So the third question that we're going to ask is, how do we make this happen? And the way we're going to do this, we mentioned it a couple of times already, is make it very, very visible in your house. Doesn't need to be etched into your kitchen table, you know, to be that permanent. But it also, you don't want to write it in dust on your refrigerator either. You want to make it um, permanent, a fixture in your house that's in a very visible location. Um, and it's recommended that you do a whiteboard or a bulletin board or some type of um, poster paper that's big enough that you can see your core values, your rallying cry, your defining objectives and your stand standard objectives from a distance more than six inches, right? From a, from a couple of three feet away, you should be able to see these. Um, if you do that, the power behind that is, is pretty amazing. And then the second thing is you got to have family meetings. It's, it's like running a business, right? Um, but these meetings, the reason that you can take something so complex and make it simple is the 80-20 rule. You, you have already achieved about 60% of the work done. So one hour of time and effort spent on the front end identifying your core values and identifying your rallying cry and then all we're asking for is 10 minutes a week to meet to go over how did we live our core values this week? Did we live our core values? Um, how are we doing on our rallying cry? So the next meeting next month is we're going to go into detail on how to do the meetings um, and make them where you actually look forward to them. Very, very, very important. So that's it. That's our show. Um, thank you for coming. We do have some door prizes. So who wants to draw? I think Father Michael cheated last time. So Jessica and Buddy Lejeune. All right. <laughs> it's rigged. Go ahead, Trevor. Uh, Mike and Aaron Henry. Ah, congratulations, guys. Just, a, just a, a copy of the book that um, this is based on. It's a really easy book to read. He's a great writer. He's, he's, um, he bases everything on a fable. So it's, it, it makes a lot of sense. And then there's uh, some stuff at the end that kind of gets you to think. So any last words, Father, Padre? Or any questions, I guess. All right. So get to go have a date night. And I hope y'all do. Hope y'all do. Thank y'all so much for coming. I appreciate it.